when I look back as to what, how he brought me, you know, like a prodigal son, you know, when I was laying with, uh, bound by alcohol, right, with no hope, standing in the street in jail 16 times, you know, thinking, how could he use me? What hope is there for me? And yet, God was faithful to me. Welcome, my friends, to The Storyteller, where you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. Arlen Melendez is not the man he used to be, and he's not shy about saying why. Today we'll hear more about the change that God brought into his life and his journey from working at the fish hatchery to serving as tribal chairman. Uh, there was a job opening for a fish hatchery manager. They had three fish hatcheries, and nobody, like a lot of the natives, they, want, they didn't want to take any more responsibility. So I said, well, paid more money. So I said, how many people are on my crew? They said, well, five. I only had to supervise five people, right? So I took the job, and I ended up the hatchery manager. So I'm, so praise the Lord, I had a, not only a, just a good job, now I was a supervisor, right? And I'd never been a supervisor in my life, right? And so next thing you know, I had to develop communication skills to be able to be uh, address all kind of human uh, issues with people, you know, their moods, all kind of things like this. So I started to learn how to work with people back then. And supervising is not easy sometimes, you know. So anyway, I, I worked there for nine years, 10 years. At that time, I was growing a little bit, not only in the Lord, but I was growing in my jobs and responsibilities and my marriage and everything. Then I decided to run for the tribal council on my reservation, and that was in 1987. And actually, I made it on the tribal council, you know. I was thinking for a while, my record's too bad. Everybody knows I did nothing but drink, right? So how am I going to have a good reputation to get on the tribal council? But maybe they could see the change over the over the couple of years that I've been a Christian. And then I was elected to the tribal council, and I served two years. Then I served as a tribal council treasurer because nobody else wanted the job. And then the next year, there were two years uh, elections. And the next two years, I was reelected again, and then I served as the vice chairman. So now I'm getting, you know, taking on more responsibility then the fifth year, I I ran for the chairmanship, and I was actually elected in 1991 as the chairman of Reno Sparks Indian Colony. And then I've been the chairman ever since 1991 to right now. I'm in my 27th year as the tribal chairman here at Reno Sparks Indian Colony. I have another year, uh, next year, which would make it 28 years, and I have to decide what I want to run for another four years we used to be in two-year elections, but now we're in four-year elections, you know. So if you get elected, you got to serve four years unless they throw you out of office or something like that. But God has been gracious to me when you really think uh, to come out of a, a bar, you know, looking into the sky thinking, wow, is there any hope? But, you know, he says, um, if we trust him, he makes our pathway straight. And and I think that's what he did in my life, you know. And now uh, there's a scripture, and, and one thing as a leader, you know, as a Christian leader, one thing is I never denied the Lord, you know what I mean? I'm not, and like that scripture says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is a power of God for, for everyone to be saved, you know what I mean? I know I always remember that. And I used to think that, I said, if I ever go home to be with the Lord, that would be a pretty good thing to put on my tombstone, right? He was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it was the power of God for his people to be saved, you know? And so, you know, when I really think about how great is God, you know, when I look back as to what, how he brought me, you know, like a prodigal son, you know, when I was laying with, uh, bound by alcohol, right? With no hope, standing in the street, in jail 16 times, you know, thinking, how could he use me? What hope is there for me? And yet, God was faithful to me. And, and you know, when I, where I am right now, you know, I still have a lot of trials, you know, 
life doesn't get any easier. I still go through the same things that everybody else does, but I go through it with Jesus. Like my mother used to say, she said, when the devil comes knocking at your door, she said, let Jesus open the door and meet him. You know what I mean? And so even though I know there's an adversary against me and he uses people sometimes, but I've seen God do miracles where he moved people out of my pathway, you know, whether it's political or whatever it may be, you know, God is faithful to us. And so, uh, and what, what joy is there too, you know, because we've had so many funerals. We just had one, just I heard of somebody passing away 56 years old. Now I'm 70 years old today. I mean, this year I'm 70, you know, and, and these younger people are dying. And one thing I will say, what I've observed, and I've been asked to officiate many funerals, in which I do, and I, probably over a hundred funerals I've probably officiated since I first got saved in 1983. And they always ask me whether it's because I'm the tribal chairman or whether or not it's because they know I'm a Christian. You know, I end up uh, officiating uh, funerals. But you know what I see is that when the Bible says that there's blessings and cursings, when you look on many of our Indian reservations, what I see is there's more curses than there are blessings, you know. When you really think about it, the death, the addiction, the suicides, all these different things are the curses that are happening to us. But you know, I'd like to see more blessings. And the blessings only come by the way of Jesus Christ through God, you know, and the Holy Spirit. And so God has really given me more blessings than the curses that I used to encounter. You know, when I think about it, every day is a blessing from the Lord. And, um, you know, it's just really awesome that uh, God could, could know us individually. You know, of all the people, he could know you personally. He could, he could actually uh, never give up on you like the prodigal son he would you know, we could be far off, like it says, that son was far off, but yet he decided to repent and he decided to go back to the father. And that, so that's what I did. I went back to the father and he was there and he waited for me and, and loved me. And no matter what I had done, he forgave me. And then he had a plan in my life, you know, and to, to be where I'm at now, to be in a church, to worship him. And you know, and to really know that he, I have a home in heaven someday when I leave this earth. But God has a plan for us. You know, like the Apostle Paul says, he wants us to, you know, uh, to finish the race. You know, finish the race to keep the faith. You know, and that there are blessings and there are crowns that we will get someday. And God would say, you know, you did a pretty good job. And it wasn't really me, it was God using me, God working through me, God working through you to really to really have the joy that's inside. And that's what our Native Americans need now. They need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ that they won't have curses anymore, that they would have more blessings, you know, that we wouldn't die out of sync. It's appointed man wants to die, then the judgment. But what I see is that sin has taken many of our people out early, meaning that if you stay in sin, the chances of you uh, dying before that appointed time that God really had for you is probably going to happen. But if you repent, you know, then God, then if you should ever die, then God would, it would be in his timing, in his purpose when he calls you home, not letting sin short circuit your life and take you out early. And that's what I see happening. You know, Jesus is important because many of our Native Americans know about sacrifice, right? There's a lot of different rituals, you know, throughout many tribes, and not just the tribes in the United States, but those all the way down to South America who are natives, they have their own way. But you'll find many of them who do sacrifices, you know, the Aztecs, Mayans, all these different tribes, and they sacrifice to God. But you know what it says in the Bible is that God sent his son into the world to save us, to be the sacrifice for us once and for all, you know, that we wouldn't have to sacrifice animals or anything, that God sent his own son as a sacrificial 
person or the lamb they call him, that he would, by his sacrifice, he would take our place and that he would atone or that he would make up for all of our sins, right? They would be forgiven. And the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. You know, an animal, if you sacrifice an animal, they would have to shed its blood. It would have to die. And it's by the blood that we're covered, you know. But we couldn't just do that with you or I could not have blood that is worthy. We couldn't cut ourselves. We couldn't sacrifice ourselves for our people. It had to be somebody that was pure, somebody that was holy. You and I were tainted with sin, so we couldn't be the sacrifice. But Jesus was that sacrifice that God sent for everyone, that if we believed on him, that what he did on the cross would redeem us, that it would be the sacrifice of all sacrifices that would suffice God the Father, and it would be accepted, and we would be accepted because of that sacrifice. And that's why we're saved. He was the sacrifice that was above everything, that he did that because he loved us so. So that's really what, uh, what his mission was, was to come and die on the cross as a sacrifice for you and me. If you heard my story, you know, about a lost person who really needed to be redeemed, you know, to have Jesus come into our heart, to give us blessings and not curses, you know, to love us so that we can be healed or of all the things that have happened to us and all the things that we have done, you know, that we want to just forget about, but they won't go away. But if we receive Jesus Christ, he would take away all our sins as far as the east is from the west. He would wipe away all those bad thoughts. He would give us good thoughts, his thoughts, and we would have a relationship with him. The Bible says that if we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that God raised him from the dead on the third day, then we're saved. You know, when I first heard that we needed to be saved, I asked that question too. Saved us from what? Well, it saved us from the judgment, from the penalty for sin. That's what Jesus did. He came to save us to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. It's true, my friend, He did it for me, He did it for you. Listen to His words. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Do you need to be saved, my friend? God tells us in the Bible, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Want to know more? Visit our website withoutreservation.com and click on the tab New Life. You can also write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877-766-4648. We're also on Facebook at Without Reservation. Missed a program or want to listen again? You can download our app and take the storyteller with you. Thanks for listening. And remember, the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friends, there are more amazing stories to tell, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller. <laughs>